questions for Stephanie and Melissa specifically. Um, there's a lot of humor infused into the second half of this. How did you two find the balance between that humor and sort of the serious nature of what's going on? I, I don't know. I feel like humor is a part of life. And for me, it's always, I, I don't even, I don't think it comes through as much in the novels as it um, does in my head. Pretty much everything's tongue in cheek in my head. Um, <laughs> But I, I love that there's more humor kind of coming through, and I think that you probably agree that Bill uh, Condon has a natural touch for sort of bringing that out. And I, but I mean, the scripts were funny; they well, were it was the there. Characters, the characters lent themselves to that. With the, you know, when you start moving, I mean, Breaking Dawn one was a very emotional uh, story, but this one starts moving into action, and you know, it's a much uh, it's a much bigger story, and you have all these characters that you created in the book. And they're fun. I mean, you know, the character of Garrett as by, you know, by, with Lee, Lee Pace. I mean, that's just someone who you can throw lines at. And, and, you know, you want that kind of back and forth. It's in keeping with the pace of the action of the movie. Yeah. Well, I think that I thought Taylor really emerged as he's got some really, he's got some good comedy in him. You know, I, I love watching him when he's doing funny. Yeah. I'd like to see him do that again. I know. <laughs> right? <laughs> Start writing. <laughs> Hey, I'm not the only one who can write movies for Taylor, okay? <laughs> Hello. Uh, this is for Stephanie. Um, thinking back to that first press conference that we did way back in, what, 2008, that was um, one of the questions that you were asked that you seemed kind of apprehensive about was how the character of Nessie would be portrayed um, in, in a film. And can you talk about sort of the discussions that went into how to do that and, the, and what you thought about the, the final result of using the one actress, um, Mackenzie? That was a really big discussion early in, um, and Wick was, you were a big part of that, you know, trying to figure out, can we make this look good? And it was a discussion. We, we looked at younger actresses, but you needed this person who could have meaningful conversations with her parents, who, could, who we would believe in these really hard scenes. Uh, and it didn't take them too long to convince me that, you know, we'll just age her up faster, and we'll have a... What was Mackenzie? Nine and then ten on set, mm -hmm. right? And then after we saw Mackenzie, it just really, for for me and Bill anyway, it wasn't a question anymore. We're like, well, this is how it's going to be done. We're gonna we're gonna do it with Mackenzie in whatever way we have to. And I think I think it turned out. I think the emotion is there. Um, I mean, it was, it's an interesting thing for me to look at it because I've seen you know the man behind the curtain, <laughs> and and you get a little distracted by oh, is that the robot hand? <laughs> well, that's the other thing is is that because you know Renesme is kind of supernaturally wise in some Based. ways. Having an actress who's nine playing all of the articulations of Renesmee from, you know, looking Perfect. six months old till to, till ten was great because we could do performance capture with her and sort of then sort of de-age her onto the kind of the proper scale that we needed to for the times. But but it was challenging. I mean I think one of the most challenging aspects of this movie. Uh, in the back Right here. Um, I, I'm going to ask the woo-woo question, if you don't mind. And I'm looking at the press notes here. I, I had heard this before, but uh, you went to bed one night. You had a vivid dream about two characters you couldn't get out of your head. Did you ever feel like you were being visited? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, inspiration probably always feels like that. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's sometimes ideas feel like they were already there and that you're just discovering them. Um, so I don't know that I thought of it that way, but it definitely uh, was a much more persistent idea than many I'd had before, and um, th something that was just that I was just wrapped up in and intrigued with. It was a really great summer. It was probably one of the best summers of my life when I got to just live in Forks for the first time. How long did you deny their voices before you actually committed them to paper? Uh, not 15 minutes. I, uh, it was, my babies were little then, and my memory was trash, and I enjoyed that little story in my head so much, you know, I woke up from it, I sat there and imagined the conversation, how it would have gone, what would have happened next, and I thought, I'm going to forget this by tonight, and so as soon as the kids were fed, I started typing it out just to help me remember, so pretty instantaneous. 